Hello, and welcome to our garden. Today we have a special new video that Agnes and I are going to film. She's not going to need any help. She's just here for the beans. But that's okay, because I don't need any help. I'm, a, I'm an expert. Uh, and today what we really need is expertise because our friend Suela, who just moved to Colorado, sent us some questions in a video that she wants our advice on about gardening because she started a garden in Colorado. So let's watch the videos. I'll insert it here and then uh, we'll respond. All right. Uh, hello, April and Lauren. First of all, I'd like to say I'm a big fan. Um, thanks for helping me out. You guys inspire me every day. I have a question today about tomatoes. So these are my tomato plants and I tried to put a cage over them to help them grow, but the cage is a little bit small um, and my, my tomato plants are really bushy and I'm not sure if I should prune them um, and cut back leaves that don't have any blossoms or fruit on them or if it's good the way it's so bushy. It's hard to see, but there's a lot of small tomatoes at the bottom. Um, the other one is a little bit smaller. So I just love to hear your guys' advice about that. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. I didn't hear like any of that. Okay, I'll fill you in, Lauren. What Suela said is that her tomatoes, she put cages around them, but the tomatoes, at least one of them is like really big and bushy and the cage is pretty small. And she's wondering if she should like cut it back and prune it. There were definitely tomatoes like lower down on there. She just wasn't sure how to go about that. And, and I would say, refer to our tomato pruning video that we filmed last year um, about how to prune your um, tomatoes and what you do, and I've done it a million times before, what you do is you, um, you have a look at the structure of each tomato plant and where each branch comes out and you have to find the suckers. And these are branches that grow in between a, um, a um, you know, where, where a branch comes out of the main stalk. And, um, and what will happen is it'll be like this, and then something will like shoot out the, the you know, from the, in between those two branches. You well, got it? Yeah. And it will just get really big and grow, but like no tomatoes were, are gonna grow on it. And it just takes up the nutrients that your tomatoes could be getting. Actually, so you wanna- tomatoes will grow on it. Tomatoes will grow on it? Yeah. You've lied to me, Lauren. I haven't lied to you. Everyone's lied to me. No one's lied to you. Okay, then what's the point? You want your, to train your tomatoes to grow upward and put most of their um, uh, nutrients into the main stem. Otherwise, it's spread out over too many tomatoes. Okay. Um, that's called single post growing, and that's great for growing up a post. In a cage, you might let a f maybe three or four stems grow larger. Um, and also, your tomato plant growing over your cage is a good sign because it means it's growing extra big. So add some stakes and maybe let it fall over. You'll still get tomatoes. Okay, Lauren, shut up. This is my You're advice. the expert. I'm the expert. Well, so all I have to say, Suela, don't worry about your tomatoes. Um, you might want to go find a few of those branches and cut them back just to make sure that where the tomatoes are growing, they're getting what they need but it probably just means that you have really healthy, vibrant tomatoes. Or you have too much nitrogen in your soil. Shut up, Lauren. She doesn't have a single problem. She has the perfect garden. And, um, you know, if it seems unstable, throw a couple stakes in there. Prop it up. It'll be fine. Add a bike frame. No, don't do that. Maybe. That would be cool. Okay, Suela has one more question. So let's watch that. Wait, shouldn't that be a different video? No. So here's another question that I have for you guys. Um, it's called the mystery of my two colored jalapeno plants. The mystery of the two colored jalapeno plant. Call Nancy Drew. 
So I planted two jalapeno starts early in the season. There, here's one, and it has lots of jalapenos on it. And then here's the other one. And it also has lots of jalapenos, but not as many, and it's very light colored. And I was wondering, so you can see them side by side, why is one so light colored and the other not? They get the same amount of sun. They both get water. Maybe the darker one gets a little bit more water. I'm not sure, but the jalapenos themselves are a lot lighter, and I'm wondering if they're going to be any good. Then what should I do? This is quite the mystery. In my expert opinion as a master gardener and a scientist, mm -hmm. this is a scientific mm -hmm. issue going on, and it has to do with your, the difference in the soil two feet apart. The soil can be totally different two feet apart in your garden. Um, you know, my guess is that this would be because uh, the plants maybe came from different places. Or one just, you know, you know how there's a runt in a litter of pigs or other animals? Jalapenos. I'm, I'm guessing this is the runt of the jalapeno litter. And it just didn't start out as well. And, and it's continued to be a little weaker. And I also would not be surprised if the water is part of the problem. Now, with pigmentation, I mean... It has to do with like chlorophyll and the sun. Genetics. I mean, yeah, and yeah, Lauren says genetics. I'm totally right about the science here. This is definitely a runt of the litter jalapeno. Final answer, um, you know, the jalapenos would probably still taste great and I wouldn't worry about it, but that's very interesting. And thank you for sending that in. Now, if any of our other viewers have gardening questions, um, please send them in. We have an email. It'll be in the in the video description or send us a video video or text. We'll respond to any kind of questions. We have expert advice. We are highly qualified. Please, no. please send us your questions. Yes, we are Lauren. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.